Hey guys, this is Weva, and welcome to your council class. This is What's an Award. So the clip that you just saw comes from a lower ELO game, but we've all been in that situation before. We definitely know what it's like to be ganked by someone, blow your flash, and then decide, ah, eh, they're probably gone. Let me walk up to the brush, see if I can ward it or check it. Now, this is a huge mistake, and a lot of times newer players are gonna make it. So you can see in this clip, that person got punished, right? We're gonna talk a little bit about what it is to ward, why you're warding, um, basically what's an award. Usually death is attached to it. And before we get started, I do wanna remind you guys, I do stream five days a week on Twitch, link up here and in the description below. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. All right, all right, enough trolling. There are five points about wards we're gonna address in this video. Vision, actually using and looking at them, how to use the data inversely, baiting, and planning time. The first point is about vision. Do you see this dark area here? Warding this area will grant you 360 degrees of vision in this small spot letting you know who comes through, who's not there, things like that. A ward is basically simulating if your champion was standing there, but to a smaller degree. Champions grant 1200 units of vision, while wards grant 900. So as you see, when I stand in this brush, I'll gain vision up to just past the entrance of Baron, and all the way down to a little bit outside of the river. Now when I place this ward and walk away, you'll see that my vision drops down to the inside of Baron Pit, and just inside the river edge. Note that I did say 360 degrees. That means that when you're warding or thinking about warding, you should be thinking about the spots that you can maximize the vision you gain from each ward. If you need a symbol or an example, think of a pizza. And if you cut it in half, if you place a ward against a wall, you're only gonna get half of that pizza. When warding, the angle of the ward matters. The slightest little movement to the left or the right of a brush could give you vision around a wall that you couldn't see before. Note that all I did was move this ward slightly to the left and it granted me vision of that pathway on the other side of the wall. Not only is warding going to give you vision on your screen, but also on your mini map, which is something that new players have to become pretty adapted to using uh, and also veteran players. Control wards, aka pink wards, if they've been playing the game for a while, will disable enemy wards around and reveal traps that are placed there. This will also grant vision of champions that are camouflaged, but not invisible. Now there are many champions in League that have these attributes, but this would be the comparison of Evelyn, Pike, and Rengar to Akali, Kha'Zix, and Shaco. So the next point we're gonna talk about is actually using the wards and looking at them. Now in this clip, you can see that Drasana and Top has placed a ward in the river brush. Malphite's clearing it. His attack speed's slow, and it has four hits on it. It's at least four to five seconds that he's standing on the ward, and she doesn't even respond. Correction. About eight seconds he's standing on the ward before he walks into the lane. That's plenty of time for you to see, if you're actually looking at the map, that there's a jungler coming to gank you. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned a skill training, looking at the map while you're waiting to see us. put on this is to have them check the map every time they're waiting around for a CS. So if they kill one, check the map. See if there's four players on the map. Okay, they are. Good. Back to CSing. It'll get them in the good habit of checking the map often. This will increase their map awareness as they start to implement new skills. But map awareness and last hitting are definitely at the top of the list when you're talking about fundamental skills. See? I told you I did. And also about not pushing the wave. So in this next clip, you're going to see my response to someone uh, pushing the wave and being warned that there's a gang coming, the jungler walking over vision, and them never once looking at the map or responding to any of the communication. A few moments later. You're just not warding or you're not looking at them. Of course what?
Yeah. Really? Literally no way to avoid Twitch ganks is built into the code. Yeah. This is a huge issue when someone says, well, they're not really good at the game or they're not a professional. Being a professional and looking at the map are completely two different things. This is like comparing the fact that you can't swing a baseball bat if you didn't play in the major league. Map awareness is a functional and fundamental skill that has to be developed regardless of what level you're playing at. And to close up this point, deaths cost gold. It costs money. Each death is 300 gold that you give to the other person. So those are the things you have to kind of think in your head. And when you're teaching new players, you have to kind of make them play in a way that is a lot more preventative when they're learning their new skills before they try to get out there and just, you know, rip somebody's head off. So the most basic way people use wards is you place them down and when someone walks over it, you see where they are, you ping them on the map and say, hey, that guy's there. Go check that out. Or you wait for them in a brush if you're an assassin and you kill them and get a pick for your team. So that brings us to our third point, and that's using the data inversely. That means that if we place a ward and we don't see someone there, there's a good chance that they're not in that area. So that means if I place a ward at a jungle camp, and I see that the jungle camp is cleared. However, the enemy blue buff has just come up. That means that there's a good chance that if their jungler is on track with his pathing, he's going to be in that area. And if we need to, I can go with my jungler from the mid top or the bot laner and collapse on them and most likely get a kill and get an advantage for our team. And if the enemy jungler isn't there, big deal. It took you 15 seconds after you pushed a wave to walk over, get a blue buff, take a camp, whatever it is, and ensure that, hey, the jungler's not on this side. And if you have another ward, Place one, get more vision. So as a bonus, champions like Lee Sin can do really cool things with wards. They collect the data on how to get behind you and kick you to your death. Yeah. Ellie vision! Ellie, come on, dude. <laughs> come on, what was that? What was that shit? Yo, straight hand delivered. I condemned her into the thing. <laughs> I know! And then she died. Did she not die? I'm just saying. So our technically fourth point is really quick one uh, it's being able to use the wards as a distraction or as bait so oftentimes what you can do is you can ward an area multiple times and if someone walks over a pink ward you might get lucky and they decide not to sweep it because they figure who would ward an area twice and usually that generates death for them it's pretty good you should try it out next time try it out seriously Right up. I mean, it's not surprising to see a support wander off by themselves into dark jungle, face checking every brush that happens to be there because they're all about putting their faces in brushes and uh -oh. dying oh, to shot <laughs> explosive things. For our final point, I'm going to be showing you two clips. One, you're going to see a full vision of the map, and then one, I'm going to cut the vision of one team, and you're going to tell me which one is more comfortable for you to team fight in. Now, as this team fight's going on, you can see everything. You're probably shouting like a black guy at a scary movie. Run, bitch! Run! So as it would seem, when you can see everything, you always have the answers, right? It's always that, well, they should have done this. We could have done that. But if you don't have the vision, you can't really make those decisions. And that's what this is about, planning time. If your team has full vision of an area and they're going to fight in it, you can already set up a tactical map or a plan and know where you want to fight, who you want to fight specifically against, and who you want to stay away from. So at the start of this fight, red team is missing a player. However, no one has vision in the area they're going to be fighting in outside of mid lane. The only issue here is that blue team has two tanks in the front line leading the charge and their DPS are staying behind them and their tanks are delivering kills into them. There's enough disruption going on that red team starts to scatter and run their own way. And the most worthwhile decision when you don't have vision in the area is to just not fight. I hope you enjoyed What's an Award. 
If this is your first council class, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content that can help you up your game. So as always in closing, thank you for choosing us to be the positive to their negative, and we're going to see you at the next council class. And until then, please, masters, remember, in the council of the universe, the power is yours. See you later. Every item I have is a fucking active. Oh, I should probably run um, Indigenous Hunter on him, eh? Ingenious? Is that what it is? I don't know. Did you say Indigenous? Indigenous, <laughs> indigenous Hunter? <laughs>